Hi. All right. I think I figured this out. Um, I'm Keely, also known as Cephalopod Geek, and we are here. Interp Training Tuesdays. Um, this is. We are filming live on Periscope. As you may have noticed, this is my first time uh, on Periscope. And uh, of course, in this format, you can ask me any questions, type back comments, uh, let me know where you're from, for example. And uh, for those of you who might be watching on YouTube later on, you might see me responding to some of those. So thank you to Nicole to, for inviting me to my first Periscope broadcast, and I hope everyone is doing well. And today we'll be talking a little bit, at, now of course I have some notes off to the side, so excuse me if I ignore you or not, don't look directly at you for just a little bit, but um, we'll be talking about some skills that'll be great for interpretive staff, frontline staff at a variety of sites such as zoos, aquariums, museums, parks, and so on. Um, so I've found that the skills I'll be talking about today actually are very applicable for a wide variety of different kinds of situations, not just uh, roving at parks, but they're handy when really you want to meet anybody new. In fact, I found that uh, a lot of these skills are really handy even in the art of trying to pick somebody up. So who knows, you might get a wide variety of uh, different things out of our Periscope today. So. Um, if anyone is joining me today, if you just want to let me know where you're coming from or where you're visiting from, that would be great, or what sort of interpretive site you work at. And um, because, of course, working at different sites, we're all going to have different kinds of experience with roving interpretation. Some of you might be rely almost entirely reliant on roving interpretation, whereas some of you may not have that as a full part of your uh, job description. Uh, and it might just be a small percentage of the t kind of interpretation you do in a day, so I'm just interested in the sort of backgrounds that everybody has uh, with roving interpretation. Um, and part of the reason why I'm focusing on it here today is because I've spent a lot of time thinking about roving interpretation as it tends to be rather underrepresented under in terms of the resources that we get uh, as trained interpreters. We spend a lot of time learning how to do our different programs and talk to visitors. Um, but when it comes to roving interpretation, a lot of time it seems to be sort of a, yes, this is important, you should plan it, and we should keep on doing it. But um, I found that there's not always more that's said about it. So for the next 15, 20 minutes or so, I'll talk about some of the things uh, that you might find handy to keep in mind and some of the tips and tricks that I use, uh, so it might be handy for you at your site as well. Uh, so if there's any interpreters watching right now, if you wouldn't mind letting me know, just typing in, giving me a couple of estimates of the kind of, of the numbers that you use in terms of percentage of time you spend in a day doing roving interpretation. Those are the words I'm trying to say. Uh, so uh, in terms of how much time you actually spend uh, doing roving interpretation, uh, but I'd also be interested for to know or for you to think about um, how much of your day is on average spent working directly with visitors. I know for myself, uh, when it comes to directly working with visitors, it's probably about 60% of my day, uh, primarily in shows and programs, whereas honestly, it's only about 15% of that time is spent in roving interpretation. Um, and even still, with those face-to-face, one-on interactions that uh, are 15 to 20 percent of my day, oftentimes uh, they have felt like some of the most excruciating parts of my day, mostly because I feel like I'm doing it entirely wrong. Um, and because it felt like such an awkward skill for me, that's part of the reason why I've spent uh, some time trying to consider what might make the, this a little bit uh, stronger. So I tried to think about what was the closest sort of analog to roving interpretation. And honestly, it seems to me a little bit like the art of trying to pick somebody up, which may have just made it sound a little bit harder or tougher. True, but yet you are striking up a conversation with someone you've never met before and you have a set goal in mind. 
Now, for North American audiences, you might be familiar with TV shows such as Friends and How I Met Your Mother. In both of those shows, we have some, um, shall we say, womanizing characters. Joey Triviani and Barney Stinson. Barney Stinson, well, that man, he's directed. He knows what he wants. He has a playbook. He has a plan. He has a goal, and he's got the confidence to go ahead and do it. And, well, that's uh, something that we want to keep in mind, too. Uh, so it is a super important sort of thing, and that is the closest sort of social script to what we try and do in terms of our roving interpretation. So if you feel a little bit more comfortable, you can think about it in terms of going to a networking event and trying to strike up a conversation with someone there or at a conference, um, getting to know people in that kind of format, or even if you're just attending a friend's party uh, or you have met that somebody and now you are uh, you're interacting with their family for the first time. That's a similar kind of thing as well. So um, if we think about just the situation of Barney Stinson, mostly that's what I've gone with because that's what I find most entertaining. Uh, Barney Stinson is an awesome character. And if we think about him, he's a guy trying to meet a girl. And so what's the first thing he does? First, he figures out the location of where he wants to go to. Uh, and that is, as interpreters, do as well. You need to figure out where are you going to oh. Barney might have a particular home bar that works best for him. But when he arrives and figures out what he wants to do, he's going to scan the bar. He's going to take a look at the women. We may not like it, but that's just how, that's how it goes. That's, that's how it happens. And we need to do the same thing with our visitors. We need to take a look at them and try and determine a few things. Taking a look at their appearance. Honestly, the way they dress, some of the things that they're wearing can give us a big hint as to what kind of visitors they are. You might get a sense of where they're coming from based on college t-shirts or sport teams um, with different bags and hats with logos on them. Um, just yesterday I was speaking with visitors with a Husky logo on the jacket, so that gives me an assumption right there that what I say about oil and gas might be need to be approached in a different way than the parent feeding her child all organic grapes or whatnot. Uh, so we can get an idea of who our visitors are by their appearance, but we also are going to get a sense of how approachable they're going to be based on their body language. And that's something Barney Stinson is going to be looking at too. Um, is body language open? Is eye contact happening? Now, Myself, I have a bit of a big background in uh, improv, and in improv, you play a variety of different games. One of the most popular is Yes And, so if any of you have ever seen um, Whose Line Is It Anyway, you might be familiar with some of these games as well, uh, where somebody does makes an offer, and the next person follows up with Yes And. Uh, that's a good way to think about approaching our visitors as well. And with our visitors, the offer might just be as simple as eye contact. Honestly, if you make eye contact with them, if they have a little bit of a smile, that right there is their nonverbal offer to you. That is where you need to step in, be the Barney Stinson, be confident, and get in there. That is honestly half the battle. Now, I know it's very easy uh, for interpreters to choose some different props, stand in a particular location, and wait to, for visitors to come to you. But Barney Stinson would not be as successful as he was if he didn't go out and do it himself and make the contacts. And yes, sometimes it's going to feel awkward and sometimes it's going to feel strange, but half the battle is just starting and saying hello. So that eye contact is the offer. And the next thing that you want to do is not just the hello, but honestly, hello is one of the best starts or even pickups that you might possibly go with is, hello, how's your day going? Do you have any questions? Uh, just as Barney Stinson has a variety of his different opening lines, such as, I'd become a, if you were a dementor, I'd become a criminal just to get your kiss. It doesn't work in the real world, but hey, he's got an opening line. In fact, he has some, and that is something that as interpreters we want to make. We want to make sure that we have our hook. And what we 
are going to uh, talk to them about. Uh, the hook is going to be incredibly in handy. Um, and the spirit of Barney Stinson's Dementor pickup line, uh, we can think of in terms of something like, have you felt this sea otter fur? Have you found the whatever? Uh, this spot is one of my favorites. But to have an effective hook, we also have, an, have to have an effective plan. So like Barney, we need to know where we're going and what is the resource there that we want to talk about. And of course, what is our resource goal, our theme that we're aiming to get at with our visitors. Now, of course, um, uh, the main thing that we're interpreters for is if we know that we want to talk about sharks but we're going to have to plan our hook for talking about sharks but we're also going to have to have a sense of what what it is that we want to say about them now it's very tempting this is another spot where um, I've found very difficult and other interpreters have found difficult is that we just talk broadly about sharks but of course we know as interpreters that is not our point we need a theme, we need a message. Maybe your message is just that sharks are an important part of the ecosystem, or sharks are awesome and we should come to appreciate them more. Whatever it is, decide your message early on. If you're talking about sea stars, what is it that you're going to say about sea stars? Is it that they're related to sea cucumbers and urchins? Is it um, how people should touch them gently and interact with them in tide pools and touch pools? Decide that out the, at the outset and make sure that you are sticking to that. Um, but of course we have visitors coming from all sorts of different places and different backgrounds and experiences. So it's also good to be prepared for the visitors that already are somewhat familiar with what you're talking about. Uh, so thing that's good to plan for is what, is the, what would the next step be? Let's say you've got your theme, um, your main message, but maybe they've already got that. So what would the next step in there steps towards self-actualization and learning be? What would another outcome that you would want to have happen uh, be available? And uh, of course, one of the most important bits and something that can so, so often be ignored is also make sure that you know what you want them to do with their knowledge. Want them to know how important sharks are in the ocean's ecosystem and therefore seafoods as a result. Do you want them to know that sea stars are in fact an animal and are best touch, best to be touched in a certain way? So you want them to, the next time they go to a tide pool, teach somebody else how to properly touch a sea star? Make sure that you know what that goal is. And of course, it's very important that that goal is related to your site's mission and goals in an, as well. Uh, and ideally, of course, that's planned very closely in regards to those management goals, uh, just as you would for any of the programs that you develop. Now, of course, it can all be pretty tricky, uh, particularly the bit about staying on topic, uh, which is why it can be handy to have somebody, to, to have a little practice uh, working on um, distractions and uh, staying on point. But of course, one way to try and avoid that in the first place is to make sure you know what, you, what your message, your topic is, but also know, uh, but also, yeah, again, a, a little bit of practice as well. Uh, so for example, if I'm talking about sea star, if, so for example, uh, a way to practice that is um, with a game. So I remember early on when I started as an interpreter, this is something that I had to do early on in my training. I had to pick uh, a topic, a topic that ideally I was fairly comfortable talking about. It didn't have to be related to anything at the aquarium, but just uh, some sort of topic I was comfortable with. And as I went through a short three minute talk about this topic, uh, there was somebody who would hold up a set of images uh, or symbols that were generally unrelated to what I was speaking about. Uh, so for example, if I was talking about sea stars and they were to hold up an image like this uh, of an anchor, then somehow I'm going to relate my message of sea stars uh, to this sort of image. So if I've been saying uh, that sea stars are in fact related to urchins and sea cucumbers, uh, it's because they have 
the five long muscles or the five parts to their body and they are found uh, along the bottom of the ocean floor where a great deal of other items can sometimes be found um, as well. And so sometimes it's hard to know the difference between all these different things found on the bottom of our ocean floor or some sort of connection of that regard. Sometimes, yes, the connection, the transition is tenuous, but the more you do it, the more you practice it, have somebody work with you, pick up these different images. I've just picked up a game that's close by where I am right now. Uh, if you have someone working with you uh, to practice this, it's a, it's a great thing to do with your team uh, or other interpreters at your site. It will really help you to feel a lot stronger um, in terms of the transitions that you're making to stay on topic with what, you, what you're wanting to do with your visitors. But, of course, there's a lot of other things that come in handy as well, a lot of other techniques as uh, in regards to the kinds of questioning that you use, just how effective your props are, how you set those sorts of things up, how you plan them. But of course, those are training topics in and of themselves. Uh, mostly today, I just want you to keep in mind uh, to really make sure that you get yourself out there and are go into these sorts of situations with the laser focus of someone like Barney Stinson. Because again, this is a man who knows his goal. He knows where he's going. He's got his pickup lines. In fact, he's got, he plans for them. He has a playbook. He knows exactly what he's going to do. So plan for it. Know your hook. Know where you're going. Um, and he knows that if he's successful or not, if they leave the bar with him that night, how do you know if you're successful? So practicing that as often as you can and just getting out there. Um, I find it so, so common that a lot of times our volunteers, our interpreters, myself, find it really difficult to just take that first step. And that's what I want to encourage all of you to do today. Well, not necessarily today, but sometime this week. I want you to make the extra effort to go in there like Barney Stinson and just try, even if it feels a little awkward, so that you can continue practicing those kinds of uh, interactions and approaching people uh, in that sort of way. And as you have more practice with it, hey, you might find it comes in handy for other aspects of, uh, of your life as well. Uh, so hopefully that helps some of you in terms of roving interactions. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, you can feel free to uh, send me a tweet or a message. Um, my Twitter handle is the same, at cephalopodgeek. Uh, or of course, uh, if you have contact information with Nicole or leave a comment in the YouTube section or anything, I would be more than happy to share a lot more of the resources that I have with you as well. Um, but thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for my first Periscope broadcast uh, and for um, making the approach uh, with Visitor Training Tuesday. So thanks again and have a great rest of your afternoon.